Foot Clan, here we are, the My Guys episode of the show, and I'm excited to reveal some big names on today's episode. A reminder, we're giving away the UDK for life. All you have to do to be eligible to win, go to ultimatedraftkit.com, pick up the 2023 UDK, and we're going to give away a UDK for life this afternoon on the live stream. Do not miss it. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Friday, August 18th. Welcome into the My Guys episode of the show. Mike Wright is here. I am here. I did not. It's My Guy time. Jason is tr Jason wants everything to be a time now. I'm so proud of what you did. The I had to restrain. I, I, I called him off. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You saw me. I wanted <laughs> it's My Guy time. I, you know, I think that the people want that as well. But you yeah, are we correct. You can't just do it all the time. The reason we want it is because it's special. Yeah. Look, I, it's because he says no most of the time. He denies it. I he builds up demand. I cannot wait for it's Monday time. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants every day of the week. <laughs> Welcome in one and all. It is our My Guys episode of the show. Very excited to dig into nine players that we have strong flag planting conviction on. Going to make the case for each of our My Guys today. And uh, look, I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about the names that I'm throwing out and vice versa. So um, I think there'll be some agreement, some disagreement, some uh, prove it to me sentiment mm -hmm. here on the show. Uh, Jason Moore present and accounted for as well. And I'm Andy Holloway. So excited to have you with us. You can find us on X at the FF ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. The Deucers are in the building. They will also be helping us out this afternoon because we have a very special live stream, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, giving away the UDK for life. It's our yearly giveaway. Also a signed Derrick Henry jersey, a signed T. Higgins mini helmet. That giveaway will take place at the end of the live stream. Throughout the live stream, we're going to be answering your questions, um, interacting with all the listeners, uh, whatever you want to talk about, that's what we'll be doing. Just having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. Bob, Bob. <laughs> All right. And then uh, <laughs> the only thing you need to do to enter <laughs> is go to ultimatedraftkit.com and pick up the UDK by 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And the winner, like I said, it'll be announced today. So I'm excited. That's coming this afternoon. And the show, the My Guys episode, one of the most anticipated of the season. It's here. We did it. But first, let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Not a lot to talk about. But Sam Howell has been named the commander's starting quarterback for week one. Darn right, he has. Very excited about that. We uh, might be talking about him in the next segment. <laughs> Sam Howell? Yeah. Okay. Just a little tease. He might be my my guy. Oh, okay. Are you going to say that about every player we talk about before the my guys? No, just Sam Howell. Because I love. If you switch to Sam Howell, I'll be. Uh, I mean, if you if you Jason loves Sam Howell. I, I look. I've been a believer since college. I just don't know how much of it is the Howell. That's the problem with right. You. No, I get if it. If his name was more benign, if it didn't give you the chance to literally howl at the moon, would you like him? Um, less for sure, less. Yeah. But I do think that he can be uh, – I, I think he can be there's an no actual way he, NFL starter. There's no way he likes this guy if it's Jim Smith. If it's Jim <laughs> Smith, the, this guy <laughs> this guy's a loser. But, no, he's played great in uh, in camp. He's earned the job. I mean, we have preseason football yet to come, and he has um, established himself, built some excitement. We have an offensive coordinator change, change in Washington. So lots of reasons to be excited. And guess what? They get to play Arizona week one. That's a we good, will definitely be talking about that later. It's a good place to be. 
Uh, the Athletic is projecting Malik Davis being left off the roster for the Cowboys backup running back. Uh, Rico Dowdle is currently the number two behind Tony Pollard. Who is Rico Dowdle? That could be one of the things you've said out loud oh, recently. Very much so. Uh, he is a, a player who's been kind of on and off the, the Cowboys roster. I mean, really no investment. The The only difference here for Rico, I mean, you have, you have Deuce Vaughn, which – I don't know, maybe Deuce Vaughn is, is a real thing, but it would certainly be an outlier. But Dowdle is – he's the only beef boy mm -hmm. on the roster. <laughs> and he and he's not even that beefy. No, no. I know. It's um, – Six foot, <clears throat> 215. Beefy. <laughs> he's the only beef boy. <laughs> um, surprise. <laughs> what? Uh, Saints running back Kendra Miller returned to practice. He, he is wearing a brace on his right knee. But, but he's back. But it's good to see him out there, and it, it means the injury doesn't seem to be long-term. We thought it was more serious than apparently it was because they didn't say he's out indefinitely. That's correct. Had yeah. they said that, I would know, oh, he could be back tomorrow. Um, yeah, well, my guys will be revealed in, in an indefinite <laughs> period of time. One other update that is similar to this with Kendra Miller is that uh, Taron Armstead, who was carted off yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's a good yesterday, update. We talked for about the it in the news for the Dolphins, their left tackle. Uh, it looks like his injury is not going to be a season ender. He's going to be out a little while, but he will be back uh, for the majority of the season. Yeah, and so um, big news for Tua, mm -hmm. yep. uh, who needs to avoid taking as many hits as possible this season. Uh, I don't think we have anything else unless, uh, Al, you got anything for us? No, sir. All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Nothing you can take can tear me away from my God. The vintage video drop. How have we not updated that? Because we will never update that. Is that where it's reached now? The point where yes. and, and I know most people are listening, so it means nothing to you. But, but, just, but be happy, just be happy you're a listener today and not a watcher of the show. We ha Every year we have to go. Like I have to make an actual physical trip to the Smithsonian. And I have to oh, go. Oh, to retrieve that? Yeah, I got to give them a, bun a bunch of tickets and things. And then they hand me an old 8 millimeter film. And that's where that's from. Yeah, some s great CGI. <laughs> All right. Uh, but that's not the important thing here. We are planting our flags on our favorite players heading into the year, um, instilling some confidence for the listeners out there to select these players where they're being drafted. Uh, talk to me, Mike, about, before I reveal my first one, what makes a my guy? So a, a my guy is, it's a player that no matter what their ADP is, you are targeting them. Now some of these players are going to, you know, maybe feel a little bit scary because this is like this is an early round pick and this is a high draft capital pick, someone that has to come through. Sometimes it's just your favorite value in the draft. I know that I have a, a, one of my guys is just – I think he's just an incredible mid-round value. And then one of them is just happens to be my favorite player at the position when you factor in everything from their seedling, their floor, their draft position – their ADP, like so, it, it's a it's a whole range of variables that put together just our favorite players and players that we are heavily targeting where we can possibly get them in drafts. Yeah, and and again, it's it's trying to you know we've talked a lot. We've been doing the show since 2015, the My Guys episode, and and they've certainly we've had some big time hits, we've had some big time misses throughout certainly. the process. Uh, that is normal when you are attempting to identify players that aren't necessarily the you know the, the fancy community has been getting wiser over the years there's a lot of uh, information out there and and we are looking to break the mold and give you an advantage with these players well i i think in in fairness this year to to make sure that i you know hit and get these right my three my guys are they just so happen to be the first three adp off the board cmc jamar chase and Justin Jefferson, I'm planting my flag. Okay. I'm going to be bold. I think they're going to have great seasons. So, Jason, that's it. His, that's it. I am done. done. Which is hilarious because, like, it's – I mean, it's a, it's a joke that's right there, but it's actually – that's that's scarier than you think. No. Because, like, the odds that – the odds that one of those guys 
has an off season or has an unfortunate injury, like they they exist. All right, it is time to get to it, and I'm going to kick it off with uh, my first my guy, um, a player that I have the greatest conviction on of my three my guys, my absolute number one favorite pick of the season, my guy number one. Mike Evans. It's Mike Evans, wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yesterday in the office when I was talking about Mike Evans uh, to Al Borland himself, I mentioned my great conviction on how wonderful a pick Mike Evans will be this year, who presently is going as the wide receiver 33 on sleeper. Um, and he goes, oh, you know, how old is Mike Evans? He's like 31, right? He's 29 years old. Mike Evans is 29 years old. Last year was a bumpy ride. And when you look at the, the game logs for Mike Evans, it really came down to a stretch beyond the first half of the season. It was the run-up to his monstrous league-winning number one overall in the week, three-touchdown performance. Thank it, you, Mike. It was the decline of Tom Brady. It was the farewell tour of Tom Brady as they uh, sub 500 themselves into the NFL playoffs. So it was a rough ride. There's a lot of burns. There's Kyle Pitts-level burns with Mike Evans over that last stretch of the season. But here's what I want you to know about Mike Evans, and here's why you should not doubt Mike Evans heading into the 2023 season. It wasn't his fault last season. Mike Evans graded higher last year as a receiver. According to Pro Football Focus in the wide receiver grades, he graded higher last year than he had in each of the prior Tom Brady seasons. That's number one. Number two, he's at 1,000 straight yards in nine years, averaging 9.44 touchdowns per year in that stretch. Last year, which wasn't a good ride, had him finish in 15 games played, not 17, as the wide receiver 16, and he's being drafted literally twice as far back in drafts right now at wide receiver 33. Previous seasons, 8, 10, 12, 8, 18, 2, 24, 12. Never even been close to wide receiver 33. The problem that people have with Mike Evans right now has to do with the quarterback situation. So let's say the teacher has come to you and says, here's the test that you have to pass, Mike Evans, for me to draft you. And there'll be extra credit at the end of the test. But here's, here's question number one. Can you handle having a quarterback that isn't Tom Brady? There's literally nobody else in the National Football League who has proven that he is immune to quarterback play more than Mike Evans. He has played with Josh McCown, Mike Glennon, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Jameis Winston, Ryan Griffin, Blake, Blaine Gabbert, Tom Brady, and yes, this year he gets Baker Mayfield and maybe Kyle Trask. I'm going to say it's possible, right? Baker is not locked into that spot. But here's what I like about this situation. Mike Evans is the best friend a quarterback can possibly have. He is a physical beast. He beats you down the field. And when you look at Baker Mayfield, here's the next question on the test. Baker Mayfield is a really, really good deep ball thrower. In 2021, when he was with Cleveland, he was ranked sixth in terms of deep ball passers. He had a 112 passer rating going deep. It was better than Cousins, Herbert, Josh Allen that year. And then you go, well, okay, that's 2021. What about last year? Last year, he played for two different teams. Last year, he had a better deep ball adjusted completion percentage than Josh Allen. He actually had more 20 plus yard touchdowns last year than Patrick, Mah Patrick Mahomes did. That's impossible. Despite having half the attempts down the field, Baker Mayfield can throw the ball deep and Mike Evans makes it. So your margin of error, throwing the ball deep is so you can make mistakes and yeah. he's actually good at doing it. Um, they have a defense that's going to set the table for this offense to have to throw the ball all the time. And then here's the extra credit on the test. Just the superlatives coming out of camp. Best shape of his life? No. Jason, <laughs> the, the general manager, said he expects him to get a ton of targets. Russell Gage just went out. When we have to talk about Kate Otten as a target in this offense, which no disrespect to him, but, like, it's going to be the Mike Evans and the Chris Godwin show. And I like Mike Evans the most as a my guy because he's generally going a round or two later than Chris Godwin is. This is a player that wants to be a legend in the sport. 
He's come out and said he wants to break the 1,000-yard consecutive streak that Jerry Rice has. He's come out recently and said he wants to break the Randy Moss 23 touchdowns in a season number. So you're talking about a player that can get to double-digit touchdowns. You're talking about a player that is going to be filled up with targets all season long. I just don't understand the ADP at wide receiver 33. I still think he has top 15 potential at the wide receiver position with Baker Mayfield, with Kyle Trask. There's my Mike Evans case. And I know for a fact that Jason is not in the Mike Evans camp. And I also know he's been burnt. I know he's dealing with the Kyle Pitts type of feelings because last year he enjoyed he he didn't enjoy the ride. It's really tough because I own a signed Mike Evans jersey thanks to his Week 17 championship gift that he gave me. And so I do love Mike Evans forever and always for that. But the path getting there was so rough. He had, I think, 43 points in one week and 36 points in another week. And then, you know, you take those two games out, the consistency wasn't there. And I know you say, oh, he's, you know, quarterback proof. But then the argument is like, well, it was Tom Brady's fault last year. It was it was seven bad games. That's really what it was for Mike Evans. You, you're you're going to wipe out nine years of 1,000 yards. I started seasons. him in all seven of those. <laughs> he had seven bad games. The pace from for the first nine weeks of the season – was 1,300 yards, six touchdowns, same old, same old. And you forget, I mean, he still had 77 for 1,106 last year. I just don't – that's a low, That's like a low Mike Evans line. Yeah, I, I get it. And I do think that where he's being drafted right now is a good value on yesterday's mock yeah, draft. Yeah, yesterday's mock was a good show example. Where Mike was able to get him was unbelievable. Um, I, I, you know, he, he will probably beat his ADP. The question that I was going to ask is, the, is one of your final – um, statements, which is, what is his ceiling? Does he still have top 15 potential? That's where I I question it, but sure. obviously he's done it so many times that uh, I can see it happening If he again. wasn't a touchdown scorer, if that wasn't part of the um, equation for him, like an Amon Ra or Keenan six touchdown is kind of where you settle, I would agree that with this quarterback situation and where this team might be this year, I don't think that ceiling exists, but Mike Evans could put up 12. In this offense, I think that's very possible, and, but, uh, and so that that's where I sit. That's my conviction, and you can ride or die with me if you want to. I I think that Mike Evans is a good pick at his ADP because he should beat it. Like he he should get to a thousand yards because this is who Mike Evans is as a player, and is the the upside case to me for Mike Evans is the target share comes back. I know target share is relative to the piece of the pie. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the last couple years with Tom Brady have been throwing pr pretty much more than any other team in NFL history. But the target share reflects that. So it's like 20% last year, 2021, 16%, and 18%. What happens if the pie shrinks, but we get back to Mike Evans seeing 26 27% of the targets, and then it just completely balances out the, the lack of volume and the unfortunate injury to Russell Gage I think that that puts that back in the conversation. Yeah, you'd have to go back to 2015, 2016 when he was up at 30%. I, I mean, I, did, I couldn't even bring myself to, to mention the 30. Cause the, yeah, but the 24, 30, 22, 22. I if, mean, if he gets a 30% target share this year, he's, he's the best, he might be the best pick in fantasy football. And, and don't let this be a Baker Mayfield case in terms of like, go get Baker Mayfield. I just like the fact that Baker, we saw it last year with the Rams. He'll chuck it. He'll throw the ball up. I mean, that's something he's willing to do, and he's been successful with. So um, who's right. up next? I'll, I'll go next. Um, congratulations on getting Baker Mayfield as your first my guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is this the Sam Howell pick here? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, I, I, Sam Howell is my first my guy. He <laughs> is so talented, and he will win – fantasy championships for people oh that, is, that that clip is perfect <laughs> that is not the truth no my first my guy should surprise nobody who's been listening to the show this entire off season uh or even even recently because it's a common comment to say that this player is an automatic in the third round for me mark andrews mark andrews all season i have been banging the drum i have been the drum the drum has been banged against me for Mark Andrews. <laughs> you have become the drum? Every single mock draft, every single real draft, when I'm in the middle of the third round, I love grabbing Mark Andrews. I think he is discount Travis Kelsey, 
And I think sometimes when I say that, people, oh, that's nice, Jason. You're very handsome. Um, I respect <laughs> they don't you. Say those things. But Mark Andrews is not Travis Kelsey. And okay, maybe he isn't, but I am going to make the case that I actually think he can be the number one tight end, and he has a really good shot this year to do that. So for my my guy dissertation, because that's what this is, right? This is, a, this is uh, we're getting PhDs for this. I want to give the case of how good Mark Andrews can be. He can be a smash home run league winning pick this year. Uh, last year, he sucked down the stretch. He got injured. You lost Lamar Jackson, and that is why he's in the middle of the third round. Uh, you know, you got to remember what happened. He gets injured in week eight. He misses week nine. After week 10, you have the bye, and Lamar plays in two games and then gets injured, and Andrews' season was blah. But before that, when you had Lamar and you had healthy Mark Andrews through the first six weeks, he was on pace for 161 targets, 110 receptions, 1,289 yards, and 14 touchdowns. He was being the Mark Andrews that he was the previous year when he was the number one tight end in fantasy football. It wasn't Kelsey. It was Andrews, and then he just kept being a terror, and then those unfortunate injuries happened. If you're on Yahoo – Goodness gracious, he's 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 dropping into the fourth round. He's, his average draft position right now is three twelve. Um, I think the value there to get a difference maker at the tight end position is incredible. Here's the the special case I, I want to highlight about Mark Andrews that I we haven't really talked about before. We've we've been discussing new offensive coordinator Todd Monken coming in for the Baltimore Ravens, the change in their pace, the the fact that they're going to throw the ball a lot more. They ran three wide receiver sets, 81% so far in the preseason, which is a drastic change from the low 12% uh, that we saw last year. And we say, oh, that's great for the wide receivers. But what does that mean for Mark Andrews? You know, will they turn him into a blocking tight end since he's the only tight end on the field? Nope. No? <laughs> no? No. I mean, goodness, no. Mark Andrews has blocked in the passing game 27 times in his career wait what mark andrews that can't be true yes as a raven he pass blocked 27 times in his entire five-year career you want to know how many times <laughs> wait, he passed blocked last wait, season how did we figure this out you know how many times he he passed block blocked last season once one time he is the wide receiver <laughs> okay, one so, so for this for, team gotcha this is the uh the kind of the piggyback of if Dalton Kincaid was a rookie wide receiver, you might be okay with it. Yeah. Mark Andrews is not a tight end, is what you're saying? Mark Andrews is not a tight end. He is not there to 27 block. 27 times in his career. In his career. That's, from, is, that's from PFF. Yeah, yeah the data's from PFF. He ran a route on 90% of the Ravens dropbacks last year. That was tied for number one at tight end. He was targeted on 25% of his routes last year. That is number one among tight ends. To put that number into perspective, it is better than any Travis Kelsey season ever. I hope he was asked to pass block over 500 <laughs> times. <laughs> I hope he literally just, he just literally olayed the guy through. <laughs> I want to run a route. Zay Flowers has been dominating, looks great in camp. I love it. But the number one target still out of camp, the reports are Mark Andrews is still the guy. He's the number one guy. They're going to pass more. He is in the third round, not the first round. You're you're sacrificing uh, taking Travis Etienne or Aaron Jones instead of sacrificing taking Austin Eckler in the first when you when you go with Travis Kelsey. Let me, so. let me ask you a question, genuinely, because um, – the case is there. I, I absolutely see the discounted Travis Kelsey. Like, if you want the advantage at a onesie position, your best dice roll is going to be Mark Andrews in the third versus the guarantee of what you have to have with Kelsey. I know that Kelsey's going to finish one or two at the position historically. Are you unhappy if you got four or five out of Mark Andrews? Super unhappy. If that, Mark Andrews has, finishes at, at, at four tight or five? end four or five, uh, assuming it's not because of injury, well, it, if he plays a whole season and finishes at tight end five, yeah, I won't be happy. Well, I, you wouldn't be happy with injury either. No, no, no. Well, I mean, but yeah. But, but I mean, I'm actually making that point. I'm saying like three of the fast, past four years, he's been four or five at the position. So it's been a ton of variables. It's been injury, quarterback, but it's still been the reality. So would you be unhappy with him at four or five? That's yeah, all I, I was asking. I, I, I think that at the end of the season, he will be the tight end two or the tight end one period. Okay. 
Anything to add there, Mike? No, Mark Andrews is a, a sensational pick in the third. All right, we're going to be back with Mike's My Guy momentarily. We're back with my guy. This is my favorite my guy when I calculate it, or when I factor in everything that's going on around this player. Yeah, I mean they, they they say you don't like have a favorite child, but yeah, everyone knows that's not true. You but just I can't mean, tell your children who the favorite is, right? And we don't tell our my guys who a favorite is, but eh. I do because I put him in the wide receiver one spot. Okay. We're talking about Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks, much like Mike Evans is being extremely disrespected when it comes to ADP. Currently on sleeper, the wide receiver, 30, going at the back of the sixth round. The player who has finished top 15 five straight years is being drafted as the wide receiver, 30. And he doesn't even have a quarterback problem. I, like, were those Mike, your top two wide receivers in the mock draft? Tyler Lockett and Mike Tyler, Evans? They were. They they were yeah. and I I realized that when I took Evans yesterday I was like oh well this is Andy will appreciate this big yeah a little premonition but like where I, I'm I'm not out on Mike Evans but Mike Evans maybe you are out because he you're like ah oh, he's a Baker Mayfield problem <laughs> Tyler Lockett has Geno Smith who was literally the most accurate quarterback in the NFL last year as a starter and he's just he gets it done year after year after year. I understand they spent a first-round pick on Jackson Smith and Jigba, the first wide receiver of this year's draft, a truly electric player who I think is going to have a fantastic career. But the Seattle Seahawks are not done with Tyler Lockett. There was nothing on, on film, nothing that we watched of Tyler Lockett last year. We go, mm, uh-oh, uh-oh, Tyler Lockett may not have it. Top 15, like I said, five straight years. Tyler Lockett will be the starting outside wide receiver in two sets. It's also not uncommon when they're in a one wide receiver set for it to be Tyler Lockett. Last year, Seattle was a big play offense. This is su surprising information for what we know of Pete Carroll, but last year they ranked eighth in pass rate over expectation, eighth in explosive pass rate. And look, last year they had 30 touchdowns of 10 plus yards. That was the most in the NFL. 71% of their total touchdowns came outside the 10 zone. When you have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, that absolutely makes sense. Over the last two years, Tyler Lockett has 11 touchdowns of 20 or more yards. That is tied with Devontae Adams for the most in the NFL. And it's just Tyler Lockett started this train back in 2018. And I remember that season because Russell Wilson had a perfect passer rating going to Tyler Lockett. And it was, he can't keep getting away with this. No one can keep doing this over and over and over. And yet here we are. Tyler Lockett just keeps getting it done over and over. If you want to project into the future that, that JSN is going to take over and be the number two target for the Seattle Seahawks, that's fine. But it is not happening this year where, with Tyler Lockett on his contract with still plenty more to give. The, you, one, the one thing, two things I'll, I'll sure, add to in. your argument, if you don't mind. It, one, no receiver is probably better at working back to the quarterback when a play is is developing than Tyler Lockett has been over the past few years. And this, the one other area where, like, I've wanted to throw the shade on Tyler Lockett because JSN is that good. He's had that good of he a is. camp. He is a he's, tremendous player. He's had an incredible camp. But what I haven't really considered, and you know how bullish I am on DK Metcalf, mm -hmm. is I haven't necessarily thought that JSN could negatively impact Metcalf because of Metcalf's age. It's easy to be discriminatory towards the older Tyler Lockett and, not, and think, oh, DK Metcalf won't be affected, but Lockett will be. Right. Whereas... You know, Tyler Lockett has kind of proven narratives wrong for the duration of his career, um, and this is a team that's going to have to throw the ball a lot. And it's just he, Tyler Lockett, is an outlier player. At this point of his career, you have to look and say a guy who last year was playing in his age 30, or year 30 season, and he was still fantastic. He just is an outlier of a player. In fact, I never thought that you'd be able to use Geno Smith. <laughs> as a point in his favor compared to Baker Mayfield. Here we right. are. Like you're like this guy. You you have a Baker Mayfield problem, but guess what? And and here I got Gino. Here we are. In fact, over the last five years, on a per target basis, he is in fact the most valuable player in the NFL over the last five years on a per target basis. The targets are still going to be there. 
I don't think this team completely morphs away from what they were having success on offense this past year. And and like I said, wide receiver 30. Maybe you aren't as bullish on me that Tyler Lockett can once again finish as a top 15 wide receiver. Well, that's okay. You don't have to be. What if Tyler Lockett finishes as wide receiver 22, 23? He's still an absolute smash pick at wide receiver 30 going in the back of the sixth round. It's just it is it is an automatic pick for me. It was an automatic pick most for uh, most of the offseason for Jason, I believe. Yeah, Tyler Lockett is one of your highest exposure. He is uh, my most. Players. He's my Number highest one. exposure. I had to make a rule <laughs> to stop drafting him because I I just couldn't. You know, if he got injured, it would ruin how, all of my leagues. How will you be able to handle the inevitable actual decline of Tyler Lockett? I'm not talking about this year. I'm saying like when he like Frank Gore was eternal until he wasn't. Right. Like Tyler Lockett will hit certainly. At, like, could you two handle that? I think we will be able to predict it. I think we'll see it on the field. We'll see some of the decline, and then the following year we'll be out. That, that's oh, I hope guess. you turn on him the way you did Adam Thielen. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, I exactly. hope you, I hope you a, hate him. He is a perfect, perfect example because of how terrible and putrid uh, Adam Thielen was last year. Yeah, you you saw the decline of Adam Thielen. We have not seen the decline of, of Tyler Lockett. And then just another feather in his cap, which NFL people – may cringe when they see it because Tyler Lockett catches the ball and he says, you shall not hit me. And he just goes out of bounds or he dives he to the ground. Literally lays down. He and this, Mannings. This is part of his success. Why is Tyler Lockett still – wide receivers, why is Lockett still this great when he's going to be 31? Because he doesn't take big hits. He he's says, also little, so it's a smart move. He says, I don't want this in my life. It was the, the whole – uh, uh, Darren Sproles mm -hmm. had his his big goodbye. Uh, I don't essay. I don't know what to call it, but he he brought up getting hit is just terrible. That's why I tried not to get hit. And Tyler Lockett read that goes, mm, Mr. Sproles, you are on to something. So Tyler Lockett, Mike's yeah. first, my guy. Let's move on. I'm going to reveal my second, my guy, and um, I'm very excited about this player. I am entering territory that is very dangerous here on the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mm -hmm. I'll explain why, or maybe you'll understand it inherently. But my second my guy is... Jameer Gibbs. <laughs> running back Jameer Gibbs of the Detroit Lions. In fact, when we put out a few uh, social media messages asking the Foot Clan to try to guess my guys, this was the one most, re most often mentioned around my name. And I don't feel like I've... I've gone on monologues about Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I think what has happened is that every single mock draft we've ever had this offseason, it's organically been a target to pick up Jameer Gibbs. Like, I mention him, and I prefer him, and I take him above other players because... It's his, it's his gravitational pull. You can't, you can't get out of it. Which, historically on this show, mm -hmm. <laughs> and historically in life, uh, running backs for the Detroit Lions, not named Barry Sanders... <laughs> It has not gone well, whether it's uh, the Abdullah Express. Yeah, we. Yeah. Hey, or, he's still in the league. Or that Carry On Johnson guy. Oh my gosh, Abdullah's in the league. And yeah, you're doing right. And he is. Carry On isn't. Um, but listen, the uh, the Jameer Gibbs. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the guts of steel. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go out on the limb and I'm gonna take a shot. I'm gonna target the late third round, number twelve overall pick for the Detroit Lions, Jameer Gibbs. He's a rookie. I know it. But what I love about this pick in fantasy is that you're not just drafting a floor player. You're going to get a guaranteed floor with Jameer Gibbs. What you're drafting is a ceiling. You're drafting the potential to be a massive impact player for your fantasy team, and you're getting him late in the third round. It is not outlandish to believe that Jameer Gibbs will be talked about as a top five draft pick in, in next year's draft. That is a possibility and this is the only time you're going to get to do what I'm doing, which is taking him in the third round of drafts. He was drafted at 12 overall. And the history we have with running backs taken that high in the draft, your floor is so incredibly high. We had Gurley, Zeke, McCaffrey, Saquon, Jacobs, Clyde, and then this year, Bijan and Jameer Gibbs. So you're talking about since 2015, those are the first round running backs. Clyde and Jacobs 
were the worst first year performers, but they were tw picked 24 and 32 in the first round. And they still gave you the floor I'm talking about at 12.2 fantasy points per game for Clyde and 14 fantasy points per game for Josh Jacobs. The other guys that were drafted up near the Gibbs range, Zeke was 20 a, a week. McCaffrey, Barkley was 21 a week. McCaffrey was at 11.8, so he was a little bit lower as a floor. But Gurley was 15.2. So you're talking about super young, age 21 season, running backs with first-round draft capital, capital. We've talked a lot about the fact that targets are going to be the name of the game for Jameer Gibbs. Targets are worth two and a half times a rush attempt, which means that in a full PPR league, which is especially enticing for Jameer Gibbs, if you have 125 rush attempts, which I think Jameer Gibbs will absolutely get to 125, and you have 70 targets, that's worth 335 carries. So if I told you you got 335 carries from a running back you're taking at 312, 310, 311 in a fantasy draft, you would scoop that up. The unknown of the rookie performance is what puts a lot of fear into people, and I think Jameer Gibbs is just that guy. I think Jameer Gibbs, from a talent perspective, is that good, and you know, you look at the Lions offense. Last year, they were fifth in points per game, fourth in total yards. They averaged in home games 58 plus total points per game in terms of fantasy production. And here's the biggest stat, maybe because we've all kind of revealed something a little unknown about a player we've been talking about. The Detroit Lions backfield led the entire NFL in fantasy points per game last year. They were better than every other team. And that was with Jamal Williams and, and DeAndre Swift. And they literally upgraded both of those players this offseason. Jameer Gibbs was targeted in the draft by the Lions. It surprised people, but they went out and basically said, we're going to draft you at 12 and we're going to build an offense around you. And so I think this is the one chance you're going to get to have a discount on a player that's going to make a huge impact. And you're going to get big games from him. You're going to get a floor, but you're going to get huge games. You're going to get the screen pass that goes 74 to the house. You're going to get... I mean, the baked-in upside that Mike mentioned on some situations yesterday where, you know, what if David Montgomery gets back? Yes, well, if exactly. David Mon Montgomery was not there right now, where's Jameer Gibbs in drafts? He's high second round, late first. <clears throat> yeah, late first. Yeah, I mean, he's He'd be probably be drafted right after Bijan. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at Bijan was, what was he, eighth in the draft? 108, Gibbs was 112. There's a little bit of that, you know, you have to spin the first round pick on, on Bijan. You get to spend a late third on Jameer Gibbs. Both players drafted with the intent to build an offense around him. So I'm a big fan of Jameer Gibbs, and I think he's going to be a great fantasy pick this year. Young, explosive, super athletes are usually really good picks for fantasy football. Rookie running backs are usually really good picks for fantasy football. First-round rookie running backs yeah. are almost always good picks in fantasy football. Detroit Lions RB1? It gets scary. <laughs> does, does, does that one red flag? That, does that one red flag just stop everything from happening? Carry on oh. All right, let's move on. You, um, yeah. Do you realize what you've just done to yourself, Andy? Yeah. Oh, the oh, fantasy I'll take reaper. It. I'm willing. No, I'd say it hitting the drop. That's, yeah. That's poking the bear. I'm brave as a lion. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am going to stay in that division, and my next my guy is someone that I just had a bug in me. I had to have this guy. Welcome aboard. As a my guy. <laughs> Justin Fields. Justin Fields, at the end of last year, when, when I was leaving the season, I was like, I just can't forget how dominant he was. I can't allow anything to get in the way of that. That was like one of those things to remember as I left the season. And what happened last year, if you if you remember or m maybe you don't, I will remind you, there was a, a, a philosophical shift in the offense and how they used Justin Fields. The coaching staff came out and literally said, because they were like, what, what changed? Like, we, we went and looked at the other great mobile quarterbacks, the Jalen Hurts, the Lamar Jackson, and, and we saw how they were used. And so we started doing that. And it was really cool. It was, <laughs> it was really good they for fantasy They changed everything football. to make him better. It was yeah. the coolest, man. Here, here's what they did. They gave him more designed runs. So a designed run is basically his rushing attempts minus scrambles and kneel downs. 
The first six weeks, 2.17 designed runs per game. From that point on, 7 through 18, it was up to 5.3 designed runs per game. He averaged 7.1 yards per carry, highest in the NFL. He averaged 10.6 rush attempts per game and the most quarterback scrambles of all time. He tied Lamar Jackson for the most uh, rushing games of 80-plus yards with seven of those, and he is just getting started. We haven't seen the best Justin Fields yet. It Over the last decade, 13 quarterbacks have had more than seven and a half rushing attempts per game and started at least 15 games. Okay, remember, he, he just averaged 10.6. I'm setting the bar here at only seven and a half. I think that he definitely hits seven and a half rushing attempts. So if we assume that that, which I, I think is fair, if we assume that, let's take a look at the 13 quarterbacks that have had that many rushing attempts. They average 22 and a half fantasy points per game in four point leagues. There are guys like Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. Here are their fantasy finishes for quarterbacks who have had that rushing baseline. The quarterback two on the season, the quarterback one on the season, four, three, two, two, three, one, five, and five for Justin Fields. Um, it's all top five. The only finishes outside of the top five, well, you had uh, quarterback six in uh, 2021 Hertz, and you had quarterback seven in 2020 Lamar. They're all great. And there's one, there's uh, Patriots Cam Newton. Oh, yeah, we, we don't want to talk but, about that. But this is not, pa you know. This Those is are design jogs. <laughs> right, exactly. So that he More doesn't. A jaunt? He doesn't, a design jaunt. <laughs> he doesn't count. That version of Cam Newton was toast already um, and on a bad offense. That's not what, what Justin Fields is. Justin Fields is, like I said, a young, explosive athlete. It's going to be a great pick. And then. They upgraded his passing. They upgraded his offensive line. They got him DJ Moore, which we already saw a screen to the house, two screens to the house um, from this offense in training camp. And the the reports out of camp are just absolutely awesome. Uh, the the wrap up article from the Athletic just said this: said you could see the difference in how he runs the offense. This is his team. He is in charge. They aren't going away from designed runs. He has a better receiving core. He easily could be the quarterback one. He's basically, I mean, last He's year. He's the Jalen Hurts of this year. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, last I, year it was Jalen Hurts for me. Um, that worked out really well. This year it's it's Justin Fields. A couple things. Based on the math that you just uh, laid out there, the worst fantasy finish of players with that seven rushing attempts per game was number five. He's being drafted as the quarterback six right now. So below the floor. Yeah. Theoretically. Secondly, you love Justin Herbert too. And I, oh, uh, I want to give you the you. chance to, to share on the Justins, but what you don't get with Justin Herbert is a kind of built in, almost like the rushing is, it's like you got an insurance policy on the, on the draft pick, right? Mm -hmm. Because Justin Herbert, if the touchdowns aren't what we hope, which look, I went back and looked at my bold predictions from last year. I thought 5,000 yards, 45 touchdowns was going to happen for Justin Herbert. It didn't happen. So you were disappointed. Justin Fields gives you so much more protection, even if the passing game doesn't take the elevated, you know, uh, step forward that we hope it does. Yeah, I I had Justin Herbert locked on our board as my my guy for the last month. He was he was going to be it, and then I just I said I can't I cannot not have Justin Fields. I think they're both absolutely great picks. They're the quarterbacks that I want in that uh, fourth fifth round. Okay. I'm jumping in here with my number two wide guy. Wide guy? Wide guy. I like He's the it. Widest. He's a big fatty. <laughs> What's the my, what did you say? The beef eater? Yeah, the beef beefy boy. Beef, oh, beef, beef boy. boy. Beef or, boy. Whatever. It's uh, it's a wide receiver that I really like, guys. Oh, he's a wide guy. Chris Olave. Chris Olave, which I got to apologize. I've been calling him Christopher. He's apparently Christian Olave. Ooh. So, oh, really? My sincerest apologies. Christian Olave. Second Christian year. Christian <laughs> Second year wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. Now, this one is it's a little tougher to have a my guy when they're this high up in the, the ADP. He is currently going at the 305 in uh, on sleeper. But my conviction of Chris Olave turning into an elite wide receiver, like Andy's making the case for Jameer Gibbs of like, you aren't going to be able to draft 
Jameer Gibbs there anymore after this year. Chris Olave will not be anywhere close to this. 23 years old, heading into year two. And I'll start with the big comp because Garrett Wilson, last year's Offensive Rookie of the Year, plays for the New York Jets, got himself a nice quarterback upgrade, got Aaron Rodgers now throwing him the ball. The excitement for Garrett Wilson is real, and I think it is justified. But remember this. Last year, Olave out, outpaced him in points per game. On the season, Garrett Wilson appeared in all 17. Chris Olave appeared in 15 games, and yet Olave was just 12 total points fewer on the season than Garrett Wilson, and he's going a full round later on ESPN. Looking at all the rookies, since the rookie wide receivers since 2014, and we got heavy hitters in this group. We got Beckham, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Only Tyreek Hill had a higher targets per route run than Christian Olave. This team already loved him as a first-year wide receiver, and he's he is truly the number one guy out of camp. They're talking about Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas just – he doesn't look like 2019 Michael Thomas, which that's – yeah, that's – of course, that's what we would expect a player. That was a long, long was, time ago. That was a very long time ago. That's multiple season-ending injuries ago. But I, th I think they're just they're making it clear. Chris Olave is next. You have Nick Underhill, beat reporter for uh, the Saints, tweeting, Chris Olave looks like a expletive superstar. The same uh, Saints observation. Uh, the first fight of training camp. Yeah, we got that. And Chris Olave looks unstoppable. Every And these aren't just like Chris Olave is looking good out of train camp. It's holy crap. Chris Olave looks like he's about to take the leap and become the true next uh, next superstar. And he, while uh, Olave was much better in the beginning half of the season when they had Jameis Winston and it was when they turned to Andy Dalton, that was a, a downgrade for him. He has an upgrade at quarterback. It's not an... It's not as a sexy of an upgrade as getting... It's not Geno Smith. It's not what well, I'm saying. It's Aaron Rodgers is for Garrett Wilson. But Derek Carr, while he has never come through for big-time fantasy uh, points himself, he has given us fantasy weapons a ton in the past. Last year, the trade for Devontae Adams. Oh, crap. Can Adams do it without Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, wide receiver three. The year before that, some guy named Hunter Renfro, and that's, which is a joke. Hunter Renfro is a good wide receiver, but wide receiver 11 on the year. Multiple years of Darren Waller being the tight end three, tight end two. Jared Kuk. Remember the Jared Cuk? Jared Cuk. The Jared Cuk years. He finishes the tight end five. You can go back even further. You had Michael Crabtree years. You had Amari Cooper years. Derek Carr finds the target that he likes, and he's not afraid to go to that player over and over and over. And that is sensational news for fantasy football. People doubted the downfield field prowess of Adams last year, and they were right. proven – that it, was a mistake to doubt that. It was, and, and Devontae Adams has the the best – year in success of, of going downfield that he's ever had. And Derek Carr, I, th I think Derek Carr with Chris Olave, we're talking about I want to play Tampa, a superstar. I want to, talk, I want to play against Tampa. I want to play against Atlanta. And I want to play against Carolina for six of my games as well. That is also baked in that the, the, the preseason strength of schedule in our ultimate draft kit, if you go look at who has, who's got the best schedule for the wide receiver position, boom, Christian Olave. So that's just, that's just an extra bonus point for a player that I see as a true emerging superstar. This is my favorite my guy that is not one of mine. Chris, it's your favorite your guy? Christian Olave <laughs> is going to dominate. He is apt. I, I don't see any world where he doesn't. I mean, he's just too dang good at football. Not going to get an argument from me. But we're going to talk about another sophomore wide receiver for my third and final my guy. Jahan Dotson. Chris Olave was the 11th pick in last year's NFL draft. Jahan Dotson was the 16th pick in last year's NFL draft. Chris Olave is being drafted at 305. Jahan Dotson is being drafted at 801 right now. And Dotson. Dotson. We've got Dotson here. Thanks, Al. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Um, little Dennis Nedry call out. Um, <laughs> uh, Last year, John Dodson was at 14.9 yards per catch. Olavo is at 14.5. I bring these guys up in comparison because there's a lot of similarities. Both of them had very impressive stretches of the season, disrupted by injuries. 
Olave is disrupted by quarterback play, and so is Jahan Dotson. The quarterback roulette in Washington has been ridiculous over the past few years. Both players would be way more hyped if they had a full season of football last year. They'd be higher draft capital picks. But Jahan Dotson is at such an extreme discount in fantasy drafts. He started last year extremely on fire. All you need is eyeballs to watch what this guy is capable of doing on the field. Started the NFL his NFL career with two touchdowns in week one. Um, had a great four-game stretch, then missed five weeks due to a hamstring injury. And when he came back, this has been repeated this offseason, but over those final five weeks when Jahan Dotson, who was a rookie, right, so he missed time as a rookie, still came back and still outpaced Terry McLaurin in terms of target share. 119 target pace, 1,100 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns, 71 reception pace over the final five weeks with relative ineptitude at quarterback for this franchise. So the discount to me is absolutely wild. You want to take that discount to the next level? Hop over to ESPN. If you're drafting on ESPN, he's going at 907, which is the wide receiver 42 off the board, which is absolutely insane to me. And, you know, Mike is investing in a sophomore wide receiver. I'm investing in a sophomore wide receiver as my my guy. You should too. It's always a it's all good, the rage. <laughs> it's a great bet in fantasy. It is. Jason, actually, you wrote an article uh, a number of years ago called the sophomore bump. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's real. It happens. Um, of the sophomore wide receivers with an average draft position of rounds four through eight, which is the Dotson zone, 90% of them beat their rookie fantasy points per game. 85% of them outperform their ADP. The connection in camp with Mr. Howell, go ahead, Howell. has been strong. And so you have an opportunity here to, after you've built the core of your team, to invest in Jahan Dotson and legitimately have a chance at you know, 75 to 85 receptions, over 1,100 yards receiving. And last year we saw the touchdown upside in Jahan Dotson. He can get into the end zone. And so I, it's not a knock on Terry McLaurin. It's a 1A, 1B that you're getting this late in the draft. And if Chris Howell has any of the talent that Jason has professed that he does, which so far this earning the job in camp over Brissett is a did great – Did you say Chris Howell? Did I? You did. Shout out to Chris Howell, one of our longest <laughs> lifetime listeners. With, <laughs> makes an appearance. Sam Howell. <laughs> it's better this year. Howell, upside, Jacoby, floor that provided value to Mr. Amari Cooper last year. So your two options right now look a lot better than they did last year. Um, I've got him ranked as a wide receiver, too, that you're getting in the eighth or ninth round. Yeah, yeah. And I, I and I can easily see the path he has really been dominating in camp, and it seems like uh, when I when we uh, did our first like rankings post uh, ultimate draft kit statting things out, my research showed me that I really believe there was going to be a consolidation of targets here. It's why I like Terry McLaurin so much, and it's also why I like Jahan Dotson. Uh, Jahan Dotson is so much cheaper; you can get him late in your draft. That sometimes it makes me question whether I want to take Terry McLaurin who, you know, a lot of people said, well, he'd be a my guy, but the better value is Dotson, and, and they're both extremely talented. They'll have a ton of targets, a ton of value. You guys just went back-to-back, second-year, sophomore wide receivers. So who do you wide, got? Wide guys. I'm wide. going <laughs> not so old as you old losers. I'm going with a rookie. Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison is a really good wide receiver. That's the core of my case. Uh, case closed. Case closed. Um, <laughs> On to you, Mike. <laughs> he's the 2021 Bolitnikoff Award winner. That's the best wide receiver in college football. Uh, that was when he was playing with Kenny Pickett. Just absolute astounding route runner. Polished. Ready for the NFL. Um, you know, when it comes to drafting young players for fantasy, you're looking for a trifecta. You want draft capital. You want talent. And you want opportunity. Well, the draft capital obviously is there. The Vikings took him 23rd overall, despite how desperately they need defensive players. They're like, this guy's too good. Um, they also desperately needed a wide receiver, if we're being honest. Uh, the talent, to me, is very similar to Devonta Smith. When you're just a, another Bolitnikoff Award winner, when, when you're just so good at route running at setting up defenders you've got great hands 
in this modern NFL, this, you know, pass happy, uh, timing, rhythm throwing, especially with a Kirk Cousins style of quarterback, it's he's perfect. He's perfect for this modern NFL. And one of the things that um, I actually kind of like, because I, I really liked him in my scouting process, is that the Vikings took him. Because the Vikings are the same ones that scouted Justin Jefferson. And they're like, yeah, that's the guy we want to target. They look for certain traits that are similar. And every single report about Addison, I was I was reaching out to some of my Minnesota contacts as well, every single report is he's he's outstanding. The only knock on him was that he drove really, really fast when he shouldn't have been in his car. Outside of that, the reports are glowing and awesome. Now let's look at the opportunity. Does he have the opportunity to step in? The Minnesota Vikings desperately needed to upgrade the corpse that was out there on the field oh, last year. Oh, my gosh. Year. Adam Thielen, who finished as the wide receiver 30. It, w it wasn't a terrible uh, finish. He was... Can a corpse do that? Well, he was a lifeless vessel for cardio. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, like Weekend at Bernie's type of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He ran the second most routes in the NFL last year, Adam Thielen did. In fact, he was tied for the third most routes run by a wide receiver over the last decade. He was out there on a pass-happy offense. He saw 103 targets, meaning that he was only targeted on 15.2% of his routes, which is uh, also known as dead uh, last among players with 100 plus targets, dead last in targets per route run, dead last in yards per route run. There is a huge opportunity here for a talented, young, ready for the NFL player to step into a role where you can have 100 plus targets. And I do want to I do want to say this. I don't expect Jordan Addison to hit the ground running. I don't even know that he will be in the Adam Thielen role come week one. When you're drafting Jordan Addison, he doesn't cost you much. He's behind Jahan Dotson in ADP, and you just talked about how nice that is. You're grabbing a player who I think by week three will have earned that role. The second half of the year, and we see this with rookie wide receivers, like if he finishes as the wide receiver 30 this season, Jordan Addison, it's going to be because the second half of the year, he's, yeah, he's basically a top, a top Top twenty, top fifteen type of wide receiver. It, it's funny. Somebody and I didn't. Even, I have no recollection of this whatsoever. But somebody went on, uh, I think it was YouTube or Twitter, and said, you know, they they were thanking us for the show, and they said, I followed Andy's advice and picked up Justin Jefferson off the waiver wire a few years ago. Like there was a two week period of time mm -hmm. in his entire career where that was a possibility that you could have done that. I didn't even remember that that could have been done, but it was because Justin Jefferson took two weeks to get in there and. And then he was Justin Jefferson. You mentioned it. KJ Osborne is is ahead of him in the depth chart momentarily. My only question about Addison is going to be touchdowns. It's going to you know because he's not six two like Adam Thielen was, and you have Hawkinson and Jefferson. That look, if I'm if I'm Kirk Cousins, I'm looking at those guys around the red zone right now ahead of Jordan Addison. But the coverage that's going to be drawn away from Jordan Addison, it's going to put defenders in a really really tough spot where. You know, full PPR leagues, uh, the the offense without Dalvin Cook, like, let's not pretend. Uh, Alexander Madison is not going to do what Dalvin Cook could do in the passing pump, pump game. Pump your brakes. Pump, pump the brakes over there. He, he's not. He's just not. Let's take it easy. He's not that good. Let's, All right. Let's 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 take it easy. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, no, that's my only fear is that, you know, if Jordan Addison scores three times this year, would you be disappointed? Yeah, I, I think you'd be disappointed. I uh, it, it Just for context here, since 2014 – Wide receivers drafted in the first round that played at least 12 games, they average 5.6 uh, touchdowns. They average 100 targets, 854 receiving yards. Basically, they average being the wide receiver 30 statistically around there. But again, it doesn't come over the course of the whole season. You get you get uh, like a more potent version of that player towards the end of the year, and it is worth holding on to those rookies over the last couple of years. We just see it over and over and over where these rookie wide receivers are making big fantasy impacts at the end of the year. There's also the chance that he does hit the ground running. Right, There's right, a chance that week one we're all going, oh, my gosh, like this guy was um, basically in the undrafted category or getting you know close to it in the 10th round, and then you're, you're very happy. And things like concussion protocol and uh, speeding tickets can drive a price down. Yeah. All right, Mike, you get to round out our final 
my guy of the show. Darren Waller. So no disrespect to my esteemed colleague over here with his his Mark Andrews love because I, I totally understand it. But Darren Waller has become my favorite pick at the tight end position. Mark Andrews, third rounder. Then you have Darren Waller right now on sleeper going at the back of the sixth round. The last two years for the Walleris have been not great. He's had injury problems. He's only appeared in 20 games. But let's look at the situation now. The New York Giants gave up a third-round pick to get Darren Waller. They weren't worried about the injuries. They weren't worried about the age. And then look at what else is going on for the New York Giants. Who is the who is the wide receiver one for the New York Giants? We, could, we, we did this experiment, I think, a couple weeks ago, and it was just – there's so many names that it could be the wide receiver one for that team. It might just be Darren Waller. Look, and and here's a, a, a what we've seen for the tendencies for Daniel Jones. Since Daniel Jones was drafted in 2019, the Giants wide receivers have seen less than 60% of their targets every year. 59, 56, 57, and then last year, Look, 51. That was 30th in the NFL. They're just not throwing it to the wide receivers because they, again, who is who is the number one wide receiver out there that just demands targets? I'm not saying that they're bad players out there, but you don't have a true it's number a, one. It's the go-to receiver mentality. It's the, I need a first down. I need a big play. Right. There hasn't been a player that's kind of your go-to receiver in New York yet. Yeah, you don't have a player who goes in the huddle and as they're calling the play, it can be like, no, if you are throwing me the ball, and then your quarterback's like, oh, all right, you got it, Devontae Adams. This ball's coming to you, my friend. And I do need to give you breaking news since this is apparently a stat we can acquire. Darren Waller blocked five times last year. <laughs> so when you talk about drafting a wide receiver, <laughs> wink, I, wink. These uh, numbers are insane. But so, so it pass, was, pass blocking. Uh, yeah, pass blocking. To be clear. He did only have nine sure. games. Keep yeah, that pass blocking. But here's what's so important about that um, a wide receiver seeing less than 60% of the targets because that means, going back to 2014, those teams have averaged a 24% target share for the tight end one position. How does that do, a 24% target share? Well, since 2015, we've seen 19 tight ends that have had a 24% target share, minimum 14 games played. All 19 of them finished in the top Five. Now that's Darren Waller is being drafted right that at is that. That's a monumentally large yeah. sample size. It, and it, I mean, it's Jordan Reed, Walker, Greg Olson, of course, Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, Mandrews is in there, and then Darren Waller is in there a couple times because when he was with the Raiders, he was he saw twenty four percent, he saw twenty eight percent of the targets. The age is not a it, it's not a concern. Thirty one years old. It's look, it's nothing for the tight end position. We have a, a sensational article up by our own marvelous Marvin where he talked about this the the life cycle of the dynasty tight end recommend going and checking that out the fantasyfootballers.com and then training camp again try not to get too hot and bothered by training camp quotes but the quotes for Darren Waller have been you at least want un validation unpreventable in, in yeah you can't avoid him you at least want validation in camp that the player looks like the player they acquired the, the they could be going the other direction in terms of like Waller's not heavily involved right. or the age is showing and so we have uh, we referenced this tweet from Connor Hughes just the other day, but it appears the Giants have taken Darren Waller out. Some say for a breather. I think it's to force Daniel Jones to th to throw elsewhere. Then and then a quote from the Athletic: "This is my eighth season covering the Giants. There are only three offensive players who simply moved different on the field than the yeah, that made teammates take notice: Odo Beckham, Saquon Barkley, and now add Darren Waller to that case or uh, to that study." The beat reporters are madly in love. It seems like Daniel Jones is manly, madly in love. Manly in love. <laughs> we saw uh, rookie Daniel Bellinger make some splash plays here or there when that didn't seem like a player who should be put in that position. And the Giants said, yeah, we're, we're going to upgrade that and we're going to make that a focal point of our offense. So Darren Waller, Waller going in the back of the sixth is someone to me that could... Oh, there we go. Boo -goo -goo -goo. I mean, people must have been not listening to a word you said saying, <laughs> how in the world was that drop not smashed? I believe that Darren Waller can easily challenge Mark Andrews for the tight end two position by the end of the year. 
at a discount at a relative discount. to him. Yes. It's like you've been saying discount Kelsey is right. Andrews. Discount Andrews is Waller. Mm-hmm. Discount Waller. We don't Zach want Zachary. You don't want to talk discount about Discount Waller that. is Tyler Higby. Okay. Ton, yeah. of, ton of targets. Discount Higby. Drafted. We'll have to Jake Ferguson. <laughs> All right. Um, that trickle down. We can stop it. Mike Evans, Jameer Gibbs, Jahan Dodson, my three, my guys. Jason went with Mark Andrews, Justin Fields, and Jordan Addison. And Mike rounded it out with Tyler Lockett, Chris Olave, and Darren Waller. Uh, Waller was certainly on my short list when I was looking for that third guy, um, you know, throwing out some like quick names of players we were considering down the sure. stretch, like Jason's Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. you know, was in the short list. It was tough for me to decide between Jameer Gibbs, James Cook, and Joe Mixon. All three of those players I was looking at closely, um, along with Debo and Ayuk, which we'll talk about later this offseason. Those are kind of some of the other guys that were in contention for me. Sure. Uh, I'll throw out my short list. Of course, involved uh, Alexander Madison, as I'm sure people at home are screaming for. Zay Flowers is very much on that short list for me. And then I don't know if you've, you have you have sensed my agitation over the offseason for J.K. Dobbins continuing to hold out, be hurt, whatever it is. Yeah, you really believe that. And the, my relief that he was finally back on the field this week. But it was just... I don't have enough yet from J.K. Dobbins to know that he's truly ready to go, but he's he was on my short list. Yeah, I, I uh, definitely wanted Justin Herbert. I wanted Chris Olave, but he was on your board forever. Yeah, he was. He's, he was. He's, he's been such, up there. I don't know since like April. He's so good. Um, and uh, Terry McLaurin, I love, but uh, you know, Dobson wide receiver can't, one can't go. Yeah, the the wide <laughs> the, receiver one the. in fantasy football. Well, that means you got Howell at one at quarterback, and you got right? McLaurin at one at wide receiver. That's right. Yeah. What could go wrong? Cole Turner is he your uh, yeah, tight, tight end, end one? one? For sure, he's got Sam Howell at quarterback. Okay, it makes sense. How? All right, one final reminder. This is going to be your last chance to uh, enter to win the Ultimate Draft Kit for life along with a signed Derrick Henry jersey and a T. Higgins autographed mini helmet. We're going to pick three separate winners. We're going to do it today. All you have to do to enter is pick up the 2023 UDK or UDK Plus by 6.30 p.m. Eastern today. Tune into the live stream, and if you can't tune in, guess what? That's okay. We're picking one of the people that have, that have purchased this year, and we'll let you know. We'll email you. You can still win. I mean, we'll be a little bit disappointed yeah. in you. Yeah, that you'll you're be not disappointed. There. You yeah, you'll be disappointed in yourself because you didn't get to like hear it live and then so be there. Rip your pants off and dance around the house. <laughs> I don't need these or, anymore. Or the office. Yeah, or the office. Yeah, but uh, ultimate we'll check with HR. UltimateDraftKit.com. <laughs> and here, I don't want to bury the lead here. Yes, you could win a UDK for life, but also by getting the UDK, you get the UDK. You get the UDK. <laughs> which, um, look, I was doing some like back of the napkin math this morning for the amount of shows that we put out and the cost of the UDK. And it equated to like 1.9 cents per episode of, of, of what you'd be paying to get the UDK into your life, which will help you with your draft and support the podcast. For just, so, for just 1.9 cents. Yeah. I, and that math was again, back of the, we'll napkin, call it two. We'll call it, it two. It cents. could be wrong. It could be completely wrong, which we I are. Think giving, it might be wrong. We're giving you our two cents in the UDK. Nice. Hope you enjoyed the My Guys episode, but guess what? We're back with five more episodes next week. See you on the live stream this afternoon on YouTube. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.